of particular importance. Did you agree? So this is why uh, uh, I feel uh, the study of this guidance is important for us for a long time ahead into the future. How many of you were there on that 24th of May gong year? Oh, many, many, many. That's wonderful. So you remember it only too well. Well, it was an exciting moment altogether, wasn't it? We hadn't had senses so long at that time. And uh, I think all of us uh, probably couldn't take the whole thing in all in one go. I certainly couldn't. I was thinking too much about what might go wrong on the next step of his visit uh, to really take it in thoroughly. Uh, so we, I think we can still learn a great deal from it. So I think without further ado, we'll ask Dean to start to read. All right, Dean? Mm -hmm. A Flower Garden of Humanity. Wasn't that a wonderful performance by the NSUK Women's Division Rose of England Choir? Chorus. What noble and refined voices you have. You sing with the exuberance of the victorious common citizen. I can hear in your songs the genuine cries of the human spirit and sense them. Listening as you sang, they can't take away my dignity, I felt as though I could hear your conviction ringing through. Conviction in the in violability and imperishability of your faith and your love. I shall always remember your me melodious voices and want to express my deepest thanks to you for giving us such an impassioned performance. Well, I think uh, the women's chorus, which was the first chorus that Sensei heard in this country, really took him by surprise. In a way, in one, in one uh, moment, he was able to appreciate the growth of NSUK since uh, 14 years previously. It was the last time he'd visited us and the last time he heard a chorus. And I think he felt, especially perhaps from the women's division, uh, uh, he felt that growth over those 14 years. So I think it was very moving. And his words when you see them in print like this, sound so stilted. But they certainly, in the Japanese language, I believe, were not at all stilted. And indeed, the way in which Miss Yakura uh, translated them at that moment was not stilted. It's one of the things that's always difficult about translations and putting something on paper, which was said so much from the heart. So, uh, it emphasizes, I think, the incredible and wonderful thing about singing. Singing together. I remember years ago, it was very difficult to get people to sing together. In the very early days, sometimes new, new members or people joining just couldn't bear it. They felt, I don't know what they felt, naked maybe or something rather, in having to stand out and sing with everyone. And we all realized that time that to sing with other people in chorus is a part of one's human revolution, don't you think? We have all sorts of inhibitions about it. Maybe we, vote, we only sang with others in unity during the war or when we were in the Boy Scouts or whatever. And it had a sort of, perhaps a, some people think a corny ring to the whole idea. But in fact, it's the most wonderful thing. And your song this morning was another example of that. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me if I cough every so often. So, uh, I think Sensei uh, felt that, and he tried to convey that in what he said. What he was really saying was, I believe, that they, those women, when they were singing that song, felt freedom. Somehow, their spirits really soared with their song. And they felt free. And what he mentioned there was, 
their conviction in the inviolability and imperishability of their faith and love. In other words, the, the faith and love arising from their Buddha states as they sang that song burst through all the barriers, all the inhibitions, all the fears, and was free. I can feel that, and I guess those of you who enjoy singing with your whole hearts can feel that too. So it, is, it brings to light, and what he was getting at was, was, what is true freedom, I feel? True freedom, which is freedom certainly from fear. In that moment of great strength, singing in that chorus, those women knew that what was most precious in their lives could never be taken away. Of course, they weren't working it out in their heads like that. But that's what I feel they felt inside themselves. Freedom from fear is one thing, isn't it? The other is freedom from the, the chains or the shackles of one's selfish uh, desires. Those desires which uh, fetter us which in our hearts we would love to be free of, yet time to time they gnaw at us. Other things like petty jealousies and envies, narrow, miserable, selfish outlook on life, which exists in every human being. But in those moments they, they knew they could be free of that. I think we can all experience that feeling too. And indeed we can be free of it, because that is what the whole purpose of this practice is. Nothing else than being free. Free of the chains of one's desires and one's fears, which are one's unhappy karma. Freedom in the knowledge that that strength which you feel at those moments can, cannot be taken away by anybody. Absolutely no one. So I feel, you know, that is really true freedom, isn't it? And it's what we're working for, what we're chanting for. In the Gosho, uh, uh, Nichiren Daishonin described it as being like uh, the difference between a bird in a cage and the wild birds that surround it uh, singing and soaring in the heavens above the cage. And the bird in the cage, which is our Buddhahood, hears the cries of those other birds and makes one huge effort to squeeze through the bars and get away and succeeds. The struggle of the human revolution to release that Buddha state so that it can be free. Free of the chains of the desires and the narrow outlook of our selfish ego which absolutely cage it in. Don't you think? If you want to read that Gosho, it's volume 5, page 112 and 113, about the bird in the cage. It's called A Sage and an Unenlightened Man. But it's our egos which create the cage. And the whole purpose of this practice is to break through it. So I feel the experience of it, of breaking through it, even though it may only be for a moment, singing a song is very important. But of course, also more important still is that a person listening to that chorus, listening to the song, also feels something as well, don't they? In that, in that instant, too, the chorus is the wild birds singing freely. And the people who are listening 
There may be some who are free like that and can join in it freely, but there may be others who are not yet free and who can feel something glorious about what those, about the way in which those women or men or whoever are performing. And this takes them another step towards finding out about this Buddhism. What is it that these people have got to sing so gloriously together? So no doubt, singing is very important. And we're very fortunate, I think, as a, as a, as a nation or race, uh, because singing is something that comes easily to us. We sing at a drop of a hat, don't we? Singing in the bath, singing in the loo, singing on the march. Very easy for us to sing, whether we've got a good voice or not. Every so often we let go. Kicho Yamazaki uh, was saying, when he heard the chorus again on the video, he said, you know, this is a good fortune of, of, of the UK, that you can sing so marvelously. Because in France, they can't sing so easily. Not so easily as we can. They can do other things better than us, though, including cooking. <laughs> Okay, let's go on, Dean. <clears throat> Here on the hill at, of Taplo, with two millennia of history and overlooking the graceful River Thames, stands a majestic castle of philosophy and culture. I offer my deep gratitude to all of you for your tenacious efforts to establish your culture center at this historic place. Taplo Court is greatly admired by your fellow members the world over. At so brilliant and glorious a site, we are now celebrating the 28th anniversary of the start of the Kozen Rufu movement in the United Kingdom. Let me express my heartfelt congratulations. The Buddhist gods are surely watching over these happenings with joy. The youthful English poet John Keats, 1795 to 1821, wrote, Happy is England. I could be content to see no other vendor than its own, to feel no other breezes than are blown through, it, through its tall woods with high romances blent. The poet sings frankly of his love for the bounty and beauty of his native land. Yours is indeed a country rich with natural splendor. May, in particular, is a month when all living creatures dance with activity and the land itself seems to pulse with vigor. The rich greenery and the soothing breezes produce an exhilarating feeling. I, for one, believe that the United Kingdom at this time of year is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I have had the good fortune of being able to visit your country several times during this season. The flowers are stunning now, the air sweet with their fragrance. Thanks to the tender care provided by members of the women's division, Taplow Court floral gardens are in full bloom. I would like to declare that NSUK has now entered a new phase of development, one that, like the month of May, is overflowing with joy, advancement, youth and promise. A future of tremendous development is opening up for the members in the United Kingdom. So, we are still, I think, at least I am certainly, gasping at our good fortune at uh, having Tableau Court. It is uh, extraordinary that we have it, I feel, and I can't imagine what amazing uh, causes we must have made to have such a place as our center. I, as you know, work there every day, but every day going there, I feel amazed. I gasped still. If I go for a walk and see my favorite view, which is the one over the Thames Valley looking south, uh, you know, I, I still am amazed that we can stand on a piece of ground, which is the ground of our center of activities for Coast and Rufu in the United Kingdom, seeing such glorious views and amongst such beautiful surroundings. It is astonishing. Uh, in a way, I hope I never cease to be amazed I have a feeling that's, that'll, be, that'll be so. 
But I think it's important now, and we should all consider, what this great castle of philosophy and peace, as Sensei describes it, is for. What must it become through our efforts? Why is it, if you like, that we've got it? For what purpose is it? And how can we realize Sensei's vision and repay him for giving us this magnificent place? So uh, I described it uh, a little while ago as a monument to human creativity. That it certainly is. It is a monument to human creativity over the 2,000 years or so of the past. And it is uh, now a monument, a standing monument to our creativity. So far, and it will continue to be a monument to that human creativity in the future. But in what way have we to achieve this? So I feel, actually, that everything in that slogan is there. What I feel is that anyone in the future visiting Taplow Court will uh, feel benefit which is described there that somehow, even in a visit of two or three hours, they find themselves with a refreshing spirit, a sort of cleansing and refreshment, which inevitably, of course, would lead them to feel that they want to make a fresh advance, a fresh advance in their own terms, in their own human creativity. And that advance, of course, being an advance, uh, is bound to be into fresh fields in one way or another, somehow expanding their lives. I feel that that is what Tableau Court is there to, to give everyone in the future, forever, for as long as it exists. If people come to Tableau Court and they fail to feel the fresh spirit, and they fail to feel that they want to make a new advance, and they fail to feel they want to expand their lives and they can do more with it than they're doing at that moment, then I think we have failed. That's my feeling. So if we all desire to do this, not only the men's division, but I've also asked the other divisions to, to consider it in the same way. If we all desire this to be achieved, we will achieve it, of course. Because it will be in our Ichinen and our Daimoku. We'll bring it about in one way or another. This is not a one-man show. It's not even a ten-man show. This is an NSUK effort. It has to come from the hearts and minds of everybody. So, of course, there are alarm some people who live far away and maybe can very rarely get to Tableau Court. But that doesn't matter. They can communicate by Daimoku and by their HM. And their life force and human creativity will express itself in one way or another. So we can't say much more than that at this moment. We can give an idea of how this will be brought about, but it's only an idea. But I feel that is what we have to achieve. And I'm talking about not only members, not only visiting members from overseas, not only uh, new members, not only NITOC, but I'm talking about non-members as well. Perhaps, as you know, you may know already, we had about 5,000, more than 5,000 people through uh, Tableau Court on those few uh, afternoons over a period of a month, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday afternoons. A lot of people. I think about one-third may have been members, but 
two-thirds were non-members. I feel, even with what we have done so far, that it was working, that somehow or other it was giving them a feeling of freshness and perhaps of hope and confidence. But of course the job is not completed yet. We have to do far better than that. But definitely, it's for non-members too. We must break out of the habit of thinking we're only responsible for members in NITO. And for Shakabuku, we are also responsible for the people we cannot Shakabuku, although we may try. When I say responsible for them, uh, we are responsible in terms of trying to embrace them, trying to let them benefit from our spirit. This is very, very important. The time has gone when we could look inwards only. Then we looked outwards, but we looked from the pure aspect of shakabuku. Can I shakabuku this person or not? The answer is anyway, you never know, isn't it? But we've got to look beyond that to the people who we may feel right. I doubt if that guy or that person will ever practice. But they're still important to us. And that is why Nishim Daishonin included them on the Gons. People who support but cannot practice for some reason amongst their, uh, of their own karma. So, Let's make sure, especially as men, I feel, that we open up our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers for those people, those uh, non-members, and embrace them whenever we can. So, in other words, I think to, to sum up what the place Tapra Court must be, is first of all, of course, we have to create and maintain it as a Buddha's land. It must be the Buddha's land vibrating with life force. This is an, uh, uh, an unseen thing, but certainly is what in the end will create the fresh spirit through the Daimoku of those who practice there. And second, it's the point of inspiration for uh, our activities. That is the focal point. People will come to Taplo Court and through that refreshment go back to their areas in other parts of the country inspired to do something fresh and new. People will come from London in the same way and be refreshed. Therefore it will be the point of inspiration for all our activities in the future. And thirdly, it must be the place where both members and non-members in the space of an hour or two can grasp the whole meaning and significance of our Buddhist movement for culture, education and peace. A new member can come and grasp it all. Something which might take several meetings or talks with other people to gain or reading books a whole lot of it can be grasped immediately in that first two hours this is what I feel we have to achieve and uh, whatever happens whatever the person member non-member night or whatever they will feel inspired to go out and challenge life anew so, uh, certainly, apart from the atmosphere created by our faith and our daimoku, uh, we can continue with the process of trying to establish uh, various sorts of exhibitions which are able to uh, help people to understand what this movement is all, of, all about. One we have to establish, certainly, is a history of Buddhism in a visually presented way uh, and also of course that would include 
uh, the history of the Soka Gakkai and of NSUK. And secondly, uh, it must contain a statement clearly, visually presented about our beliefs and our practice. We're trying to do that in a small way now with an exhibition called What is NSUK? This was of great interest to the public. They wanted to know what NSUK was. That needs to be expanded considerably. Then, uh, at the suggestion of one of the members, uh, we ought to have a world peace room, a world peace exhibition, where people can understand, firstly, what uh, we are doing and what SGI is doing uh, in supporting the United Nations. And perhaps it might also contain a segment uh, which is devoted to uh, achieving peace and uh, developing, in practical terms, a prosperous and happy world. And then, again, uh, we have to let people visiting see that the abilities, the potential of our members uh, revealed in visual arts exhibitions and so on, as well as uh, those more uh, subtle, one might say, exhibitions of ancient objects of art, such as can be provided and lent to us by the Tokyo Fuji Art Museum, where, uh, which are in fact treasures, treasures of human creativity. These treasures from, uh, that have arisen from the cultures of not only Japan, but also other countries. The sensei recently, in his lecture, when he was in Paris, which has now, I think, been published in the latest UK Express, he then uh, spoke at length about the effect of great works of art, the effect of seeing such examples of the amazing power of creativity that exists in human beings on one's own heart. That seeing such things uh, enables the craftsman who may have crafted that object a thousand years before to convey a message to the heart of each human being. So if that message is coming from pure creativity, it's a very beautiful one. Of course, there can be evil creativity as well. We're talking about the creativity that rises from the hearts of people who wish to give joy to others. And then, uh, in time, we must develop a center for the live arts at Tableau Court. This will probably, in order to do it properly, mean a new building. And we have, of course, the... Uh, potential there to rebuild uh, on any uh, land where buildings exist at present. And even they might agree to some change in location or small change in location. But I feel the live arts are such an important part too of the industry. And for to send it to be you on dark drop in from the last April will come a significant landmark in, uh, the annual program is made through the country. So the May festivals will begin at Taplo Court, but I hope they'll spread everywhere in the country uh, as time passes. And then also it will be a place for scholars to meet, students perhaps as well from various countries, in order to, in the end, understand the greatness of true Mahayana Buddhism over the earlier teachings of Akamuni, the correct place of the teachings of Shundaijan in the history of Buddhism. As you may know, this is not understood in the scholastic world, generally speaking, and it has to be corrected. And this is why, uh, still to this very day, one can see totally erroneous comments on the life of Nichiren Daishonin in books, in museums, exhibitions, and so on. This has to end and be corrected even if it takes us 20 or 30 years to do it. But the beginning of it all can be in the Institute of Oriental Philosophy, which I hope will open its first seminar 
uh, probably in the summer of next year. And then finally, of course, and most importantly, it's the place we ourselves can go to deepen our faith and refresh our spirit by attending uh, courses there and so on. North London headquarters pioneered the way and held their first daytime course the other day. I think it was a great success and there'll be many, many more in the future. So of course, all this can't happen overnight. It'll take time and effort and it'll take all of our human potential in order to achieve it in a way to which everyone can relate, based, of course, on the Gohonzon and our Daimoku. So I think another important aspect which shouldn't be forgotten in this respect is that inevitably Taplo Court will become the sort of mirror for all other cultural and community centers that we may establish in the future and some, I'm sure, in the very near future, in this country. Inevitably, in a much smaller scale, people will feel, well, let's do that, something like Tapu Court does it, only, you know, we'll just narrow it down a bit and keep it on a smaller scale because of lack of space. So, that we get Tapu Court right, and when I say right, I mean right in the hearts of everybody, every member of NSUK, is very important as a first step. Then every other centre throughout the UK, as they grow and appear, is going to be right too. This is for sure. So we have that responsibility uh, on our shoulders. Anyway. Uh, whatever happens, it's a wonderful thought that this can lead to the opening of centres all over the UK carrying a similar message, this message, and also uh, that uh, people throughout the UK will begin to get to know NSUK through those May festivals which we will establish each year in the future. So it is a strange thing that Sensei, Sensei has always visited us in May. There's no doubt about it, May must be our month. He visited us in 1972 when he started his dialogue in May, his dialogue with Dr. Toynbee, and again in 1973 when he opened the little first office of NSUK in Swiss Cottage. Uh, how many of you here remember Swiss Cottage Office? Lots. Quite a lot. That's great. And then in 1975, he came just for 24 hours, again in May. And again in 1989, after a 14-year absence. And in 1989, he opened Taplow Court. So although he didn't open the Richmond Center, still we opened it on May the 17th. So, uh, always it's about that time. So, uh, if that's the case, what Sensei said about the poet Keats, quoting from his verse, must be so. May has traditionally always been known in the past, a hundred years or more ago, as the glorious month of May. Somehow or other, it hasn't, that sort of image of May has faded. I think the weather has rather faded too. We haven't had good Mays for a long time. Maybe it's because the British people have forgotten how glorious May is and don't respect May in their hearts. <laughs> if Esho Funi is true, that may have something to do with it. Anyway, I feel we'll gradually restore that. So we have to have beautiful weather in future in May, especially if we're going to hold the May Festival then. And we can't rely on Sensei visiting us to bring good weather, uh, we've got to do it ourselves, which I'm sure we will. Right, so we'll just do one more par paragraph or so, and then we'll have a break. I have heard of a British saying, March winds and April showers bring forth May flowers. 
the climate here certainly affects a mysterious harmony. The Lotus Sutra contains the enchanting figure of speech, human flowers. In the fifth chapter of the Lotus Sutra, Lotus Sutra, Parable of Medicinal Herbs, we find the passage, the law preached by the Buddha is comparable to a great cloud which, with a single flavored rain, moistens human flowers so that each is able to bear fruit. Society might be compared to a flower garden. Some people are mesmerized by the flowers of wealth and fame, while others wallow amid flowers of indolence and authority. Yet none can escape these flowers' impermanence. More often than not, people shut themselves off from others, living only for self-satisfaction. Nothing that is ostentatious can last, nor can it enable one to realize profound value in life. In contrast, even if it may seem very plain, the flower that we nurture within our lives by carrying through with correct faith shall never scatter its petals. We will, without fail, be able to bear the supreme and eternal fruit of Buddhahood, that is, a state of happiness that transcends birth and death. The analogy, moreover, does not end with the individual it will become possible for us to sow the vast field of humanity with the seeds of revitalization, hope, and joy and hope. Thank you. This passage from the fifth chapter of the Lotus Sutra must be one of the most beautiful, I think, in the entire sutra, and indeed in anything that's been written. A single flavored rain a shower that moistens human flowers. Incredible. So, uh, what is it that has to bear fruit through that moistening? <coughs> the single flavored rain, of course, is the single flavor of Buddhahood through introducing people to nam myoho uh, When they first hear it, even, it's like a shower of single-flavored rain that moistens them. You already know in the teachings of the Gosho, Nichiren Daishonin explains that even if a person hears nam myoho the Buddha state is stirred in their lives. <coughs> and it will never go to sleep again. And at some point in their life, they will chant nam myoho renge -kyo. So, what is the fruit that they've been able to produce? <coughs> well, first of all, of course, the fruit's going to be different from the person next door. All of us are unique. Each person produces their own particular sort of fruit. And no particular fruit is the same. So even, e even every apple is different. Even though, generally speaking, we can describe them as apples. None of, no apple is exactly the same as another apple. And uh, it's the same uh, with our nature and character. Each is totally different. Therefore, each of us has a totally different potential. Each of us, therefore, has a purpose in life which matches that individual potential. So life, you see, based on the differences in everyone, is so beautiful. But if we're blind to that, as, so, as we tend to be as human beings, wanting people to be the same as us, of course we entirely ignore that essential beauty, which is the difference in all things. 
husbands try to make their wives the same as themselves or the same as they want them to be. <coughs> wives do the same with husbands. It's a human aim to mold others to what we want them to be. But it is not Buddhism. And it's one of the main processes, I suppose, the human revolution is learning to tolerate the differences we see in each other. <coughs> so Sensei says, more often than not, people shut themselves off from others, living only for self-satisfaction. Hiding behind their criticisms of anyone that is doing anything different. Covering up their feelings of failure in themselves by criticizing or laughing at others. Such people also inevitably hiding their heads in the sand, refusing to look over their garden fences, staring at the television hours and hours on end not communicating. Parents not communicating with their children, children not communicating with their parents, all chained to narrow worlds, which are often also, sadly, uh, hazy in a mist of alcohol, aren't they? This is the lives of so many people are leading. And uh, please understand, I'm not saying this from the aspect of criticism. This is the tragedy of human li life as it exists particularly in the West. <coughs> of course, there are wonderful exceptions we can all think of. But that is the way most people live. This reflects, of course, in the actions and reactions of people when they're not in front of their televisions, gawping at programs hour after hour. Have you noticed that every single one of the ghastly disasters that have occurred in the last two to three years in this country alone have all been caused by human error? Never mechanical error. Never natural errors, natural disasters. All, every single one of them by human error. And what does that signify? It signifies the state of life of the people who caused the error. Through carelessness or laziness, through drunkenness or whatever. This is the truth of what we are seeing before our eyes. But it's also the truth of what we, all of us, are aiming to put right through the movement for Coast and Roof. People are like that because they are frustrated, aren't they? And misled, living narrow lives based on their misery. Because we are not. Now, discussion meetings are only going to be once a month in the hope that they can be even more brilliant oases and that everyone will support it. If people don't support it, it means they can't, they're blinkered. They can't see the value of this meeting. They're blind. And furthermore, they are not using the meeting for what it, one of its purposes, which is as the place where we do our human revolution. We may not like our discussion meeting. 
We may think it's a very poor affair. What the hell are we doing just standing there saying that? Why don't we go in and put it right? The discussion meeting is what we make it. Isn't it? We all understand that. But anyway, the point is, we've got to get it right. We've got to protect those discussion meetings. Sokha Gakai didn't invent discussion meetings. Nichiren Daishonin invented them. When he said in, in a number of cases at the end of his Gosho or in the PS to a Gosho, please make sure every single person without exception comes and gathers around to hear the contents of this letter. That's how discussion meetings began. So we've really got to get it right this time with our new organization. And if we do, you'll see our growth expand incredibly in the most beautiful and natural way. Groups will split into more groups wherever we look because we're all attending and we're all determined to make it the most brilliant affair in order to save those people who are suffering in our neighborhoods and communities. I'm so on, sorry to go on so much about discussion meetings, but it's the key prime activity for Kosen Rufu, the key prime activity uh, in every sense, and they are treasures. There is nothing in this whole wide world existing in humanity anywhere on such a scale as the discussion meetings of those who practice Nichiren Daishonin's Buddhism. There is nothing like it. You will not find anything like it anywhere. So let's go from now on. And I hope I don't have to mention it ever again, okay? Let's have a break and some coffee.